Okay, we're on our way to the uh, mosque in Manchester, the Ahmadi Mosque. We're with the Muslims today, as planned. Hey, Amen. Something up on it. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Google. <coughs> we're seven point. We're twenty eight minutes away from the mosque. Are we? That's not taken into consideration traffic. Highlights of your studies, bro. What, what for you? In a quarter of a mile, turn right. My main highlight of my studies is in being the mile, errors in right the Quran LSA. and the passages in the Quran that say the Bible is the Word of God. Yeah. And that it's trustworthy. That's been my highlight. And also, I feel God is guiding me in with respects to explaining the Sonship of Christ and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I feel God has been Turn right onto putting LSA. ideas into my mind as I've been studying what things to say. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely going to be using their own scriptures against them to show that what they're actually claiming about Jesus isn't true. Mm -hmm. Because the claim that the Bible has been changed is actually not that from the Quran itself, it's actually a claim made later in time after Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna we'll focus on them in the discussion. But um, if they do come at us, yeah, if they do come at us with um, saying the Bible's been changed and we can't trust the Bible, out, then I'm gonna use the Quran to uh, show them otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, what, um, <coughs> so why, why do you think the Muslims say the Bible's changed when the Quran doesn't say that and they, and they attack the Bible all the time? What, what's going on there? Why do you think that is the case? <laughs> I nearly jumped off the seat there, yeah? I would. I think the reason why the Muslims say the Bible's been changed yeah. is because that's what, that's what the Imams have been saying and that's what yeah, their scholars yeah. have been saying. Yeah, you keep driving. And this has been passed down through the years with no solid basis. So basically, they're just repeating what they've heard. Right, so they're just getting it from culture, what, what they've been taught. 
That's right, yeah. Rather than what they're getting it from the Bible. Correct, and they've not done a proper textual criticism of the Bible, because when Muslims see verses that are missing in the Bible, they assume it's been changed, rather than realising or looking into the fact that, yeah. you know, they need to do a study on textual criticism, or at least a Bible study, to yeah, yeah. come to the right conclusion. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm... <laughs> what I find interestingly is that like Muslims make the assertion that the Bible's not been changed and that the Quran is it's got no contradictions in it. Yeah. But when we do a when we do a microscopic study of both books, if Muslims do not apply the same <coughs> criterion to their own Quran when it comes to looking at um, Keep your mind on that, yeah. contradictions as such. So when a contradiction is brought up, or a few contradictions are brought up, there's an utmost denial about it. Um, but they attack the Bible without any real grounds. So... Exit the roundabouts onto Middleton Road. I do believe they've not given the Bible uh, a proper look at, or they just yeah, yeah. attacked it without reason. So yeah, it's, it's mainly what they've heard and what, what's been passed down about an illegitimate research done on that subject. So yeah, that would be my uh, that'd be my reason for that. For saying that. Have you got any question for me? Uh, yes so what what's your what would you why would uh not think now um, <coughs> why do you think the Muslims uh, attack the Bible so much? Um, well, I think what they're doing, what they do, is they kind of regurgitate old, old liberalism, old liberal, liberal ideas, and um, they don't actually um, believe their own Quran. So they're just operating on uh, uh, an unbelief, uh, uh, a kind of using uh, old liberal ideas. So they'll, they'll, like for example, I read that book today that I showed you, and uh, he's saying that that uh, in Genesis it mentions Dan, and then uh, in Judges it says that that Dan was was named Dan, and so it's implying that the city wasn't called Dan in Genesis; that it had been put there by an editor. So they're using what what that tells me is they they're using old liberal scholarship, old liberal ideas, and they're operating on unbelief, which is a direct contradiction to what they believe about the Quran and about the Bible. If we did the same with them, they'd be in an uproar. Yes. If we used liberal Islamic liberal scholars on them, they'd be up in arms and saying, "Oh no, you can't do that." But they're happy to do do that with us. They're using people scholarship uh, by people who don't believe in God attacking the Bible which is contradicting their own belief that there is a God so they're just contradicting themselves What, I, what also I found interesting Jay was the, the Muslims will use scholars to discredit the Bible yet these same scholars will also discredit the Quran so I do believe there should be a fairer application of that. Ah, yeah, that's a good point. Another, you, you come up with another good point, which I thought was really good. When you said um, that um, the Quran and, and the Hadiths all seem to be focusing on attacking Christianity and mm. the Jews. And if it was the truth, it'd be more positive concentrating on truth. Yeah. So do you want to do you want to say something about that? Because I thought that was really good. Yeah, um, when I read the Quran, the impression I got from the Quran was the Quran is basically <coughs> it's just a response to Christianity and Judaism's beliefs, rather than lifting up its own beliefs and focusing po focusing positively on that. You all right, mate? I'm getting a frog in my throat. <coughs> Rather than focusing on Islam's message, it's more focused on attacking Christianity, attacking Christianity's beliefs, and Judaism. Mm. Now that tells me that at the, at the time of Muhammad, he must have endured 
a lot of criticism, a lot of opposition yeah. from Christians and Jews. I yeah. also, when I was doing my studies, I, I found out that <coughs> yeah. Muhammad was inviting Christians and Jews to Islam. Yeah. Okay. Now, a lot of the Christians and Jews rejected him as a as a false prophet. Mm. So, I believe because of that fact, he is now he's attacking more on Christianity and Judaism mm. in the verses of the Quran. Because it talks about the meetings with Christians and Jews, mm. but they're, they're never positive. It's all about him trying to prove, say he's a prophet, but offering mm. nothing to give them any uh, reason to believe that proof. Mm. So, as Christians, we would we would never deny Christ. We would never deny Christ based on what the Quran says. Mm. Okay. I also learned as well that the burden of proof is not on the Bible to prove itself, but it's on later scripture. Any scripture that contradicts earlier scripture, mm. it must be an error, it has, it has to, it has to, um, what's the word? It has to prove itself, mm. rather mm. than putting the onus of proof, burden of proof on us. Yeah. The onus of burden of proof is on the Quran, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I think um, I studied uh, the Gnostic Gospels. I found that studying the Gnostic Gospels, there's no, oh, very little historical reference to the first century in the Gnostic Gospels. And in the in the four Gospels, there's a lot of historical information about the first century. And what you find is the Quran, really, I think, is a Gnostic Gospel. Yeah. It, you know, it lacks any real historical understanding of the first century. We don't get any information about Pontius Pilate, about where the temple is, about the Pharisees, the Sadducees. So it's obviously, um, it lacks any real historical veracity, whereas the Bible, um, the New Testament and Old Testament, there's been loads of historical information found that proves the Bible correct. Have you done any study on that? On the historical context? Yeah. Yes, I have. I found, um, I actually wrote down for historical markings that I'm going to use today, hopefully, if the Bible's attacked in such a way that I have to use evidence outside of the Bible. Um, the most interesting one was the Huliet uh, inscription. Now, uh, basically, this was a stone that was discovered, and it's actually a prayer addressed to Jesus and saying that Jesus is God. So this is an inscription, and it's been dated to the time period in which Christ lived. Wow, that's okay. amazing. This is, sorry, within 20 years, sorry, 20 years after the death of Christ, we can pinpoint that to, okay, this is historical evidence outside of the Bible. So if they do attack the Bible, then that's one of the things that I can use is history. Um, we also have archaeological findings, okay? The ancient civilizations that the Bible talks about. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's been artifacts, there's been um, things mentioned in the Bible. For example, um, is it the pool of Bethsheda? Bethsheda. Uh, Bethsheda. Yeah. Is it Bethsheda? Bethsheda, Be Beth Beth Bethsheda I think. Yeah. Bethsheda, the healing pool of Bethsheda, that's, that's mentioned in the Bible, and they found a pool. It's the description or not. Yeah, that's so, brilliant, yeah. So could we do this with the Quran? Can we do this with the Quran? Turn right onto Great Jesus Can we put a history test on the Quran? And I found that when you when you apply history to the Bible, yeah. history actually affirms the Bible, but when you apply history to the Quran, yeah. it destroys it. Yeah. It's its enemy. Yeah. You see, it makes outrageous claims, yet it can't back up any of its claims. Amen. It says the Quran Amen. is without... So. Going on a bit there. <laughs>